Hello, sweet souls. This is Jamie Goldstein, intuitive astrologer, and I want to share an intuitive flow on the week we have ahead astrologically. And I was just taking a deep breath because we are in for a big week. And so taking slow, deep, deep breaths, grounding down and into your body, really getting that solid anchor with your body, with the earth. I feel is so important to, to move through this week because hold on to your hats. There's a lot changing in the collective energy and also, you know, on a personal life, but on in our personal lives, because as above, so below, as within, so without, as the universe, so the soul. And so this week can be anywhere or from or all of the above, you know, it can be exciting, exhilarating. Jupiter, the planet of expansion, living with meaning and purpose, is moving into the initiating fires of Aries. It's this pioneering, trailblazing, saying yes to the adventure of life. The, it's a really, really exciting energy. The same day, um, this is happening all on May 10th. We have Mercury, the beautiful sacred trickster, the planet of mind, thought, communication, going retrograde at four degrees of Gemini. We're being asked to change our mind, have a new perspective. And while all of this is happening in the retrograde between uh, Gemini and Taurus over the next three weeks, you know, there might be some, our schedules might feel a little turned upside down or, um, or disrupted, there could be some miscommunications. And then we put that with the intense emotional energy of the Scorpio, a total lunar eclipse, you know, things can get the confusion of Mercury retrograde plus the Taurus, uh, or I'm sorry, the Scorpio lunar eclipse, you know, uh, any miscommunication could get really emotionally amplified here and emotionally intensified. So, and then we have, of course, the Scorpio full moon, which is a total lunar eclipse happening uh, later this week, uh, May 15th or 16th, depending on where you live in the world, which can really deeply emotionally intensify things. You know, the depths of our psyche is getting stirred up so we can release the emotional and energetic entanglements and cords and attachments that are not in alignment to our best and highest good that might be holding us back. There is so much beautiful energy and it may feel messy and raw and intense. This is a week where triggers could definitely get triggered within ourselves. And if it's not happening within you, you may be experiencing it through the mirror of others getting really emotionally triggered and intensified. Now, I'm thinking of my dear soul sister, Diane Gribben of Heartwood Healing Arts, who says our triggers are our trailheads to treasures. Any trigger that is coming up this week is not coincidental. So to me, it would not be wise to just, you know, try to avoid it or escape it or distract ourselves from it. This is a time to really embrace and befriend what is coming up, even though it may feel, um, we may feel anger, grief, sadness, you know, we may be feeling betrayal, rejection, abandonment, um, you know, all of these kind of Scorpio themes that can come up. They are our trailheads to treasures. There is a massive kind of rewrite, cosmic rewrite, wanting to kind of clear some of our old karmic habits, patterns, and even energetic, emotional enmeshments, entanglements, attachments, cords we have, old karmic connections, um, that are recorded through our old habits, dynamics, patterns from our unconscious, right? There's a major kind of massive, like cosmic rewrite, cosmic reset, wanting to reset those. So if you can, you know, it can feel like a huge swell of emotion. If you can safely hold space for what's coming, what's coming up and knowing that anything that feels messy, challenging, um, anything that's triggered externally by others, um, knowing that this is, this is essentially a cosmic invitation for major alchemical transmutation of our psyche. What's been held within our unconscious is like it cannot be held within our unconscious anymore. It might be maybe bubbling up and we'll have, you know, our beautiful cosmic players through, you know, other people, friends, romantic partners, co-workers, you know, all the people we came to play 
you know, to, to play the game of life with and um, say yes to uh, helping each other heal on our journeys. And sometimes part of that is triggering one another, you know? So if you're feeling triggered, you know, knowing that there's something within that's wanting your attention, that's wanting um, your compassionate curiosity, because there's something that's wanting to be healed, resolved within. And um, yeah, it's a big, it's a just feeling into it. I mean, it just, it feels like a, a swell of emotion. And if you're not feeling it, I bet you're seeing other people in your life experience it as well. You know, we all get affected by the eclipses differently based on how our own natal charts are getting activated. I mean, we couldn't have every single person in the world having the huge, the huge intense emotions at the same time. So if you're not, you know, you're probably seeing it around other people around you. If you are experiencing it is this beautiful it's like this can feel like a swell like a huge wave of emotion but it's wanting to cleanse it's wanting to purify and then I'm seeing Jupiter moving into Aries as this like purifying fire it's like we've got to clear out the old um karmic cords through that are keeping us corded to other people through our um old habits patterns dynamics self-limiting beliefs all of that that's up for purification and then we can trailblaze forward to really saying yes to life because Jupiter is all about living with meaning and purpose and Jupiter moving into Aries is wanting to birth um, all this beautiful Pisces energy we've been dreaming into, envisioning into throughout uh, March and April. You know, I, I'm just, I'm really sensing it as um, the way I've been feeling into it is it's like on some level, and it may be outside of our conscious awareness, because I truly believe we are multidimensional beings. We've been essentially trying out, testing the waters of new multidimensional timelines that it's like, and we've been going into maybe on an unconscious level, different aspects of our multidimensional nature has been trying out, you know, higher timelines, the higher vision, the higher dream. And then it's like our higher self is wanting to say yes, yes, yes to them. And now, um, but it's been this big choice point. We've had all this choice point energy. We had like Saturn squaring the lunar nodes in April, still is actually, which is really about taking responsibility, um, taking responsibility for what needs to be healed from the past and moving towards the future and really um, committing to living, you know, Taurus. This is the North Node is in Taurus. Um, this is about, um, I'm just kind of feeling into, I have such a sense of it, but it's, yes, it's, it's saying yes to our path forward. What do we want to ground into this reality, right? Taurus grounding. And so essentially what's been happening is our higher self or our multidimensional self has been trying out different timelines. And now it's wanting to be grounded down and in Jupiter moving into Aries. Aries is like um, carving new paths forward. And Jupiter is all about living with meaning and purpose. It's a planet of expansion. So this is really saying, yes, it's a birthing into what we've been dreaming into of all this Pisces energy. Uh, and Venus is also in Aries. So it's like our sacred feminine essence. Our heart essence is leading the way. Um, and then we'll have uh, Mars will come into Aries later this month as well. So we're having a big shift from all the Pisces dreaming, visioning, dreaming energy, connecting with new multidimensional timelines. And now it's time to say yes, to live it. And with the Aries energy, we have to engage with life. We have to take action. Um, but Maybe, and, and really this is where we want to listen to our intuition because we have all this energy in the cosmic field that's wanting to say, yes, take action, move forward. But first we have some karmic clearing out to do with the Taurus Scorpio lunar eclipse this weekend or the Scorpio lunar eclipse, sun is in Taurus, moon is in Scorpio. So when we're having a full moon, you know, you'll hear Scorpio full moon or Scorpio lunar eclipse, but the Taurus energy is just as important because the sun is there. So we have that. Um, and then we have Mercury going retrograde. So we also need a change of perspective, a change of mind. We need to come back into beginner's mind, come into the magical connecting with the quantum possibility, the infinite possibility of every moment. And then I see this um, retrograde, it's starting in air and moving into earth. We're actually, all the Mercury retrogrades this year of 2022 are partly in air signs and partly in earth, but they start in air and then retrograde back to earth. So this is about dropping from the mind into the body. We are reorienting all, I mean, 
I would say the biggest astrological energy of 2022 is embodiment. The more embodied we are, the more down and in we are, the farther we can take a quantum leap forward. I mean, that was, I, that was the inspiration for the whole um, bridging sky and earth, embodying your star wisdom summit, because I feel like embodiment is the biggest theme of 2022. Um, woo, so much was just coming through. <laughs> um, I do just want to take a moment to pause and do the linear thing here, um, which is often not my jam when my, uh, <laughs> my Pisces, my Pisces Mercury. Jupiter's on my Pisces Mercury, actually like almost to the arc minute as I'm recording this. And I just like, you know, Jupiter expands and then Mercury is my mind and my thinking and uh, my Mercury at 29 Pisces is like connected to so much multidimensionally. It's like, it's like so many, I feel like I'm tuned into so many different like timelines and able to see them that it's like, uh, to consolidate them in a way <laughs> that will make sense. It just really feels like a lot, but I'm just going to let whatever wants to flow through, but just to kind of give us a week ahead. And if you want to like jot down some notes, feel free to do so. I'm going to give us like the week at a glance here, some of the big things. So I'm filming this Monday, May 9th at, um, or Monday, May 9th, <laughs> that's when I'm filming this, the time that I'm filming, this doesn't matter. Um, so and so tomorrow, May 10th, we first have Mercury stationing retrograde at four degrees of Gemini. That happens at 4.47 a.m. Pacific. And then Jupiter ingresses Aries at 4.22 p.m. Pacific. So, and I'm going to share more about all of these things. I just want to give us a week at a glance here. May 12th, we have the Aries peak Venus portal at um, 8.48 p.m. Pacific. Venus will be at 12 degrees of Aries and the moon at 12 degrees of Libra. This is a halfway point and uh, Venus is kind of monthly dance with the moon. Um, on May 13th, the sun conjuncts the North Node at 12.06 a.m. Pacific. And this is at 22 degrees of Taurus. This is very big. You know, the sun is like, the sun is our energy. It's our life force energy. So the sun, whenever the sun comes to, you know, conjunct anything in the sky, it's like charging it up. So this is like charging up of our future, our path forward. And it's, you know, Taurus is all about grounding, embodiment, but um, creating the foundation. It's fixed earth. So really this uh, sun comes to meet the North Node a little less than once every year. So it's about once a year. So this is a big charging for our, solar charging, energetic uh, charging for our destiny, our future, our path forward. Okay. And so then May 15th, of course, um, could be May 16th, depending on where you live. We have the Scorpio total lunar eclipse. This is at 25 degrees, Scorpio Taurus access, moon and Scorpio sun in Taurus. And this is at 9 14 PM Pacific. So that's just like a little at a glance here. Now um, I'm just kind of tuning in the order because I don't really feel like going in linear order. That would probably make the most sense, but I really want to start talking about the eclipses more and bring in the context because to, you know, really to look at our Scorpio lunar eclipse, we need to bring in the context of the Taurus new moon solar eclipse that we had uh, April 30th or May 1st, and it was at 10 degrees of Taurus. So a new moon or a solar eclipse, that's a new moon, um, is like a very amplified new moon. And so this was at 10 degrees of Taurus. This is, you know, Taurus is all about grounding something down and in into our reality. It's fixed earth, creating the structure, the resources. Um, and Taurus is, of course, it's the sign about the art of pleasure, the art of receiving, the art of embodiment, just slowing down and noticing your central experience of life, right? Uh, ruled by Venus. She's our guidess into the Taurus mysteries. And so um, really this eclipse has a very powerful opportunity to bring something in that we can really receive to receive more pleasure, abundance, prosperity, wealth. These are all Taurus things. Now, something had to have let go. And <laughs> it, that's not even, I don't think I said that word right. We had to let go of something for, for that to happen because it was with Uranus, the great liberator, the great awakener. So the Taurus new moon eclipse was at 10 degrees of Taurus and Uranus was at 14 degrees of Taurus at the moment of the eclipse. So 
there was this energy of awakening, uh, liberation. Uranus is the plan of sovereignty, radical individuality, freedom, living in alignment with our truth and expressing it. And so what Uranus and Taurus has been doing, like since, you know, 2000, gosh, when was it? 2018, 19 was um, really, you know, Uranus is this planet that moves, moves fast. It's like a lightning bolt of energy. It can be sudden, erratic, unpredictable, unexpected, shocking, and jolting, um, you know, and it's been in Taurus, which is like fixed earth, the most slow down kind of sta stability seeking, sensual sign of the zodiac and so what uranus has been doing has been shaking up the ground of uh shaking up the foundations of anything we've been trying to build in our life on you know shaky foundations so anything um essentially how am i trying to say this what uranus and taurus has been doing any attachments we've had to safety security predictability consistency we need all of those to some degree, right? That actually helps us thrive if we have that to some degree. But what happens is as people, we tend to over attach to them and we won't move out of our comfort zone because we want to feel, I'd rather feel, I'd rather feel, I'd rather have a perceived, nothing certain, right? Everything's always changing, but I'd rather have a perceived sense of predictability, safety, control, certainty. If that's been keeping us if it's been self-limiting if we've if it's if we've not been willing to step out of our comfort zone and really live our most liberated free sovereign lives uranus has been shaking that up you know and look to your astrology chart to see what households taurus that's where it's been getting the most shake up taurus can feel or uranus can feel like a disruptive energy but really it's all it's always in service to our best and highest good to get us to self-liberate. It can be so hard to free ourselves to what we feel attached to. And Taurus, the Taurus Scorpio access can really be touching on survival things where we feel like, oh my gosh, if I don't have that, I won't survive. You know, it can feel that very, that kind of energy. And Uranus is like, oh, wait, that's just an illusion, right? And Uranus is wanting us to self-liberate. So if you look to see what uh, house Taurus is in your astrology chart, for me, it's my career house. I've had big, big changes, you know, in 10th house career. It's our sacred contribution to, um, to the world. I wasn't practicing astrology full time when Uranus moved into Taurus and Uranus has been knowing that Uranus has been in Taurus has been like the astrology for me knowing it has been so supportive. I'm like, this is a time to take big leaps of faith to do the risk taking. Uranus rewards that. If it's, you know, if it's, if we're going towards what truly feels in alignment with our heart, our best and highest good, Uranus rewards that typically. And if we're willing to let go of the old um, attachments, to what's not true to us. And so, you know, I did them big leap taking, uh, leaps, risk taking <laughs> leaps of faith and let go of, um, you know, a business that was not in alignment for me. And, but also I had been building for quite some time and I felt like I can't let it go. I've been, I've been put all this time and energy to building it, you know, Uranus and Taurus. It was like, take that leap of faith, do what truly feels in alignment for you. And I've been you know, I actually worked with the Uranian energy and it's, it's been amazing. Uranus will give you, you know, Uranus is typically a very big reward, a big payoff. If you just say yes to taking the leap of faith. Now, always use your intuition, always use your discernment here. Um, I'm not saying we need to do anything like today or this week. I'm just sharing about the energy. So I think to backtrack, we had the new moon with Taurus. So this was, and what was happening also is all that Pisces stellium at the time of that Taurus solar eclipse new moon, we had Jupiter, Neptune, and Venus all in sextile to the North node. So in April and or March and April, there was all this Pisces energy and you could maybe go back and watch like the Jupiter Neptune conjunction video if you're just kind of tuning in now, but you know, we've really, we've been tuning into the higher dream, the higher vision, um, you know, this, 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 the, the, the vision of this, you know, perhaps the new life you want to live, the new world, the new earth we want to build and create. Um, but it's been this really, it's been this dreaming of redreaming, redreaming, revisioning, redreaming our lives, redreaming the worlds of all that Pisces energy and a lot of expansive, you know, Jupiter, the plane of expansion with, met with Neptune, the planet of, you know, 
uh, unity consciousness, higher love, also a very dissolving energy. And then we had Venus there. So essentially all I'm trying to say is I, it would take me forever to go and like, uh, re-give all that. Just go back and watch the Jupiter Neptune video. It's like a few videos back. If you just go to my YouTube playlist, um, or video uploads. And so, but anyways, all that beautiful Pisces energy of the higher dream, the higher vision, and also Venus rules Taurus, this eclipse is in Taurus. It was all flowing towards the North node in Taurus. So all that Pisces, Jupiter, Neptune, Venus energy, and what Venus was doing coming and reactivating the Jupiter, Neptune conjunction at the Taurus solar eclipse we had at the end of April, Venus is our senses. She's our sensual knowing. She's our embodiment. Um, she's our heart wisdom. So she makes things tangible, right? Taurus, she rules Taurus. It's a sign of like what's tangible. Venus going to conjunct Jupiter and Neptune was really making tangible what we've been dreaming into, all flowing towards the North Node and Taurus where we can ground it, we can embody it. So essentially how I saw that Taurus new moon solar eclipse was um, a very powerful energy to ground in all that Pisces energy we've been dreaming into the inspiration, the higher vision, the higher dream. Now, how it will look, I don't know, because Uranus was with the Taurus solar eclipse, this wild card energy is unpredictable, it's unexpected, but it is setting into motion for something big to ripple into our lives the next six months to come. Now, you know, we had the Taurus at the time of the Taurus solar eclipse, it's a new moon. We don't always see the fruition right away. Maybe you had big changes that were happening right away, but they ripple out, you know, for the next six months to come, we'll probably see it once we have the Taurus uh, lunar eclipse, you know, later this year, like I think it's in November. Yeah, October, November. I think it's November. That's when like we okay, we'll really see it. Ah, like things will start to come into cosmic clarity, cosmic context. Um, but also with this Tor Taurus solar eclipse, it is an energy of liberation, right? So liberating ourselves from what we've been attached to is essential to really ground down and in and experience the pleasure, the abundance, the wealth, the health, the prosperity of Taurus. Look to what house Taurus is in your chart. That's where a lot of new energy is coming in. I mean, this whole year, because we've got the North Node moving through Taurus. So really, really feeling it. And what we have to do is, you know, let go of control. That's the big message, let go of control. And it's like our body wisdom. It's just coming back into your body wisdom again and again, letting your body wisdom lead you. This is Taurus. So we don't have to kind of control and make things happen. Eclipses are out of our control. They're major cosmic rewrites. They're upgrades. It's like about getting out of the way of ourself. Our higher self is like, excuse me to our, uh, you know, maybe uh, our egoic mind or something, you know, our higher self says, excuse me, and boom, bumps us out of the way. So things line up that are in alignment for, you know, our soul's evolutionary intention for this lifetime. Um, we have big opportunities to really um, uh, come into alignment with our highest timeline, you know, our highest present timeline. There also may be big, you know, eclipses are karmic. So if there's major learning lessons or soul needs to learn, those will come into effect, especially with a uh, Scorpio lunar eclipse. And so also what I'm seeing too is, um, you know, I've got all this new energy really flowing into wherever 10 degrees of Taurus was in your astrology chart, um, flowing in the next six months, something big is wanting to come. And this is also... Uh, Taurus is, you know, it's a hardworking sign, but the real essence of Taurus is yen. Is that, you know, it's ruled by Venus, the Empress energy, it's the art of receiving. How open can you be to receive the abundance and the flow of life, right? And that's also connecting back to all that Pisces energy. It's being open to see the signs, the synchronicities to guide us. There's so much abundance here that's flowing in and how open we are to receive the flow of abundance is huge. This is actually, I would say if anything, and the, the most supportive things we can do is just lay back, open up to receive the flow of abundance. I've been um, doing this visualization, you know, I'm in Oregon right now and oh my gosh, like the spring flowers are just, ah, but it's just like, I feel like, you know, in the mornings, it's like just the blooming flowers, it's like there's a whole garden bursting within me and all the flowers opening up and just starting that day, I just feel more open and available to receive. And so maybe that's a practice that you like, or it's like just going outside and breathing in and out, like with the flowers, like breathing all the beautiful flowers into your body and then breathing out and 
you'll just, you'll, you'll notice, at least I do, how it just changes my own energetic. Um, yeah. What was I saying? My goodness gracious. So, oh, this is what I'm wanting to say. You know, Taurus is a sign. It is kind of, a, it's a sign that's known for hard work and perseverance and in it for the long term. And, you know, those, those definitely that that's, there's, um, there's truth to that with the Taurus energy, but the real essence is about receiving, not doing right. Doing is Mars. That's action. Uh, Aries Taurus is about being receiving. So what can we receive from the flow of life? Taurus is about resources, connecting to our own inner resources. Uranus and Taurus is asking us to get really creative. Like our greatest resource is the wild genius of our bodies, like to get, this is all about is activating that um, big self-healing. Self-healing is turned on within our bodies, our ability to work with our energy. Um, now, a lot of people, including myself, you know, kind of last week were experiencing, you know, under the weather with something. Um, uh, I was definitely experiencing it last week. I, I think also that may be part of the big uh, upgrades our bodies are having with the Uranus being with a Taurus new moon, solar eclipse. Um, you know, there's just a lot. And I think it, you know, I think it's, I do think it's something with the upgrade energy that our bodies are experiencing, you know, as we're uh, raising our vibration, moving from like the carbon base to the crystalline nature. I could go like on and on and on about that. But if uh, I was under the weather last week with something, you know, achy, rundown, achy, you know, all of that. And um, I'm actually starting to feel much better now. But I heard a lot of people were also experiencing that last week. So, you know, Taurus is the body. Uranus is about like energy and the Kundalini energy. So it's like our bodies are kind of preparing for some major upgrade that's happening. So that's kind of how I was seeing it. And so now we have that new moon and now we have the Scorpio lunar eclipse. And actually I want to pull up the chart here. I think that will be helpful. That will kind of, that will help me stay grounded here. Yeah. Okay. I do have it. Yes. Oh, this is set to Dallas, Texas, but that's okay. And I think I just want to change it to a zero Aries chart, uh, just so it's a little more global here. Let's see, where is that? <laughs> where? Zero Aries. Oh, there we go. Okay. There we go. Let me just make sure it's not glitchy. All right. Yes. Yeah. So now, so we just have that Taurus new moon eclipse, April 30th, May 1st. Now we're in the eclipse cauldron, big, big changes happening. And we have the, our first uh, eclipse with the South node in Scorpio. So the a new moon eclipse we had was with the North node in Taurus. So that was our new new moon on the North node this year. That was a very big new beginning. Some big, 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 all that beautiful Pisces energy is flowing down and in. Okay. So now the Scorpio full moon is our first eclipse we have on the South node with the South node in Scorpio. We did have a Scorpio new moon solar eclipse last year in 2021, I think it was in November, but that was the North node, or I'm sorry, the South node was still in Gemini, or ah, the South node was still in Sagittarius at that time. The North node was in Gemini. So we did have an eclipse by that, you know, the eclipse was in Scorpio, that new moon, and it was by the South node, but the South node was in Sagittarius. This is our first eclipse with a South node in Scorpio. Now, South node and Scorpio did a whole video on this. You could also just go and um, find that video as well on the nature of the North node and Scorpio, South node, no, North node and Taurus, ah, South node and Scorpio. Um, essentially, the South node is always clearing out, releasing whatever unconscious shadow way we are relating to that energy personally and collectively. It's releasing it, bringing it up and releasing it, right? It's the tail of the dragon letting go, releasing. The North node is where new energy is coming in. So uh, we have the South node, this energy of releasing, and then it's in Scorpio, right? I love Scorpio energy. It's beautiful. It's a sign of death, rebirth, regeneration, transmutation, alchemy. Scorpio is also the sign of shared uh, energetic and emotional connections. 
It's the, you know, the sign of Tantra, it's emerging energy. So it's a sign of intimacy and deep trust. You know, Scorpio is all about kind of really going down and in and feeling the full emotional spectrum of our emotions. Like it's really feeling aliveness through truly feeling the spectrum of emotions. Um, you know, it's Scorpio's deep. It's all of its depth. It's the depth of our psyche. It's the depth of our being. It's the depth of our soul. Scorpio does uh, you know, govern what's unseen, the unseen realms, uh, you know, the spirit realm as well. Um, but also what's unseen within our own unconscious, our own psyche. Right. And so the South Node in Scorpio is bringing up, um, it's like this stirring up this big wave of emotion, whatever's been kind of suppressed, repressed stuff down in our unconscious is coming up. And wherever Scorpio is a sign of power. So where have we been giving our power away through um, unconscious and habits, dynamics, patterns, self-limiting beliefs, all of that, you know, so big things around how are we relating with power? Where are we giving our power away? Where we might actually be wielding our power um, from a wounded place as opposed to like a place of love and um, meeting life in an empowered way or relationships in an empowered way. So big things and especially in regard to intimate relationships, big things can be coming up with this eclipse, but the soft and Scorpio is really wanting to purify our unconscious. Um, this is a very powerful energy of integration. So bringing up what's been suppressed, taking a look at it, releasing what is not ours that we've taken on and integrating what is ours. Uh, you know, this is like soul retrieval, um, uh, bringing back together where we've been fragmented or splintered off. So Essentially, South Node and Scorpio is big, big purification of our unconscious. Also big clearing of um, karmic contracts. Where have we been courted to people um, through our old habits, patterns, dynamics, you know, our self limiting beliefs, those actually keep us courted to people, right? When we heal those, it actually can heal the karmic cords that are not in alignment to our best and highest self or however you want to say that. So there's this big kind of, um, but maybe, you know, this Scorpio new moon or full moons, I'm sorry, which this eclipse are having can be, you know, it can be anything. It can be manifestation, release, uh, letting go things coming to completion. So there may be things, um, there may be relationships that are old energetic cores that are coming to completion that are ready to be released, or at least maybe it's a relationship, or maybe it's just a particular dynamic, uh, dynamic habit pattern that you've been locked into with someone. Scorpio is going to touch on our intimacy. So in the evolutionary wheel of the Zodiac, you know, Libra is the first sign where we meet the sacred other. And we start to come into connection, collaboration. We start to partner up, figure out what all that's about, take other people's perspectives. And then Scorpio is where we start to merge and share energy um, sexually, just um, intimately, emotionally, where we share the depths of our soul with someone. And when we do that, there's like this um, there's this emotional connection we, you know, we form with someone and this is where things can get really, really messy. So some things that might be coming up um, are with the Scorpio solar or ah, Scorpio lo lunar full moon eclipse, you know, there it, it certainly intensity is likely going to be coming up. So there may be things about um, triggers of betrayal, rejection, abandonment, um, manipulation, power dynamics, trust, um, secrets, uh, you know, secrets might be revealed. That could be big. There could be secrets revealed, um, all of that, you know, so some of our deepest hurts, what is most intimate to us, you know, where we share the depths of our soul with someone and we felt like we could trust someone, you know, there, there could be those big things coming up jealousy that can be coming up with a Scorpio, uh, lunar eclipse as well. And I actually just had this thought the other day, it was kind of random. I was contemplating on the Scorpio energy and I had this, um, thought that came that it just kind of randomly came to me. And I just like wanted to share it here. Maybe there's someone this could be supportive for, um, jealousy is the cognitive dissonance that comes between or jealousy is a cognitive dissonance that occurs when one of our own self-limiting beliefs doesn't match up with what we see someone else living with their life. So, right. We might see someone, we might have a self-limiting belief about we can't have something that we want, right? Scorpio is about desire. We might have a self-limiting belief. I can't have what I desire because of X, Y, Z, whatever self-limiting belief. And then we see someone else 
who has what we desire. And that cognitive dissonance, right? Then our mind gets confused. It's like, well, wait, we see it's possible, but it's our own self-limiting belief that gets in the way. And so then there's like cognitive dissonance and that causes the emotion of jealousy or I don't know, that's like what came to me, a thought that came to me. And I was like, wow, I feel like that feels really profound. And I wanna share that. Um, because if we see someone else who has what we desire, that means it's possible. And I always feel like it's really empowering, right? So if you see someone, um, if you know, if you wanted to start a business and you have a friend, like one of your friends who starts a business and all of a sudden starts thriving and you're trying to start a business and you're not like where that can, you know, for just, I'm giving like an example, maybe jealousy might come up, but if we change our perspective on, wow, they're doing it. And that means it's super empowering. Right. And also, of course, you know, and you can actually be really happy for someone truly happy for them and also experience jealousy at the same time. It's not like a, this or that kind of energy. Jealousy is one of the big shadow things of Scorpio, which is why I'm sharing this. Um, but also, you know, where we can flip around where we might be feeling like the jealousy comes from feeling like we can't have something we want, what we desire. Scorpio is about desires. It is what getting in touch with what we desire. We can flip that around and say, wow, that's amazing. It's possible. It's possible for them. There's enough, right? Taurus, the North goes in Taurus. There's enough abundance, prosperity, wealth, success for everyone to experience. You know, then it's like, if we can just shift our perspective into like really tapping into the possibility. Wow. That means it's possible. I, I don't know. I'm just kind of ram rambling on, but that's like something that was bit, I don't know. I just had that random thought the other day and I was like, Oh, that's cool. I've never thought about it as cognitive jealousy, as cognitive dissonance between, um, what we feeling like we can't have what we desire and seeing someone else have it. And the flip side is it's possible because we see someone else having it. And of course, anything's possible. And so, um, you know, it, it's really the, the, the gem is to connect with and transmute to alchemize the self-limiting belief that's there. Um, yeah, you know, and it, sometimes it can be hard as, uh, you know, especially with, you know, in spiritual circles, it can be like, oh, Oh, I don't experience jealousy. No, no, not me. Um, but you know, it's, when there's the Scorpio energies there, usually there can be some element of it that might be coming up if we have something within our unconscious. So anyways, we have the Scorpio uh, full moon <laughs> lunar eclipse at 25 degrees of Scorpio. So you can see up here, the eighth house, I just have an Aries uh, or a zero Aries chart. Here's the moon at 25 Scorpio within two, within three degrees of the South node at 22. And here's the sun at 25 Taurus within three degrees of the North node. So because they're so close to the lunar nodes, that's why we have an eclipse or a total eclipse when they're farther away, we might have like the partial. Um, and then when they're close like this, that's where we have the total solar eclipse. And so, um, yeah. What was I, what was I wanting to say about that? So we have the sun and moon there. I mean, you want to look at where is this in your chart? Where is 25 degrees Scorpio and Taurus? And do you have any planets around like 25 degrees anywhere in your chart? Because those are going to be getting activated essentially, um, just to keep it like super simple. So um, now this is actually really big. Like I suggested, look where, what house Taurus is in your chart. Also look what house Scorpio, the Taurus Scorpio access. And if I like whole sign houses, honestly, it's just going to be two houses. That spectrum is going to be activated. So for me, my 10th house is Taurus and my fourth house is Scorpio, 10th house career, your sacred contribution to the world. Um, you know, it's like your outer life, fourth house, home, family, inner life, roots, foundations, those kinds of things. That access is getting the big rewrite, the big upgrade with this eclipse. You know, if it's your first and seventh house, first house being your rising sign, it's your persona, your identity, how you put yourself, how you, you know, project yourself out into the world. Um, you know, even your physical body, seventh house is the house of partnership, right? And so you want to just look and see what houses are getting activated. I don't know if anybody's interested. I thought maybe it'd be fun. I could do maybe separate videos this week on like, um, just going through the houses, like, um, like if you're a Leo rising, that means you have the Scorpio soul lunar eclipse in this house and like just going around the wheel. Like, I don't know if you're interested, just let me know. And I could put in the comments. I also thought it would be fun to do that for like the um, Jupiter going into Aries, you know, going through the chart, like 
just Aries through the houses so you can explore, maybe get a little more insight into what does it mean for you? Maybe the Mercury retrograde, I might be getting, you know, I'm like getting Jupiter, big vision, expansive. I want to say yes to all these things. I don't know what I'll end up feeling like doing, but if you're interested in those things, please say yes in the comments. And if you're tuning in, you know, it's so helpful. Um, it helps with the algorithms. If you just give this a little like, if you give a little comment or offer a little comment, it just, it makes it, um, it helps support other people to kind of find this video as well. And if you're not subscribed, you know, feel free to subscribe to the video here. And so, um, yeah, look where 25 degrees Taurus and Scorpio is in your chart. Now, if you have any planets around those degrees, they're getting big time activation. If you have any planets around 25 degrees of, um, of Aquarius Leo, you're getting a square. This is probably where you'll feel the eclipse most intensely. If you have anything around 25 degrees, Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, or Aquarius. If you have anything around 25 degrees, maybe like Pisces or um, Cancer, you're getting the training energy. Um, so you'll probably some big, big activations, but it may feel a little more harmonious in nature. I mean, it's hard to say, you know, the eclipses, eclipses are unpredictable. They are unpredictable in nature. We typically just have to surrender, release control. Scorpio is a sign of surrender. All the water, water signs are about surrendering. And with Scorpio, it is power control. Those are big things that come up with Scorpio. It's about releasing power and control and just surrendering to the flow of whatever, whatever wants to come up. You know, we really, it's like, it's this really big energy of surrender and it's like surrendering to our emotional flow. Now, not necessarily just reacting from it, but to let ourselves feel it because that is the alchemy of working with the Scorpio energies to go into the depths let that energy kind of come and purify through feeling our emotions. Now, something I want to point out, Saturn is squaring this eclipse. We have Saturn right here at 24 degrees of Aquarius. So that is making like almost a perfect square to this new moon at 25 degrees Scorpio Leo. So that tells me we got to take responsibility, right? We really need to take responsibility for um, our own emotions not that we have to control our emotions, but we need to take responsibility. We need to take responsibility for our own projections. We need to take responsibility for our own actions, right? It's not, we, we can be triggered by someone, but we still need to take responsibility for our actions. And also, you know, eclipses are intense. If you have a moment where you don't, taking responsibility, but also holding yourself with compassionate curiosity, that can be really helpful as well. Um, and so, but and Saturn ground, Saturn gives things form, gives things structure. So this is actually, this is a very, very big turning point. I think the key is here with Saturn squaring this eclipse is can we take responsibility for our own experience? Let other people have their own experience, right? That Taurus new moon so, uh, solar eclipse we had at the end of April, beginning of May, that was about liberation, sovereignty. Can we, so also giving other people to be sovereign, we have to let other people do their own thing, right? This, so there's this big energy of releasing emotional, energetic enmeshments, attachments, um, taking our own responsibility, giving people the spaciousness to also do their own thing. Responsibility is key here. Um, so I see that. Also, what I see with this eclipse is um, we have... Venus conjunct Chiron. So, and Venus is con coming to conjunct Chiron this week as well. So, um, and Venus, you know, is the ruler of Taurus. The sun is in Taurus with so this eclipse. Now the ruler of the South node or the moon and Scorpio would be Pluto or Mars, Mars, traditional Pluto, modern. Um, but I see this with Venus with Chiron as well. This is another, you know, the, the water is agitated within our psyches, essentially. It's agitated to get our attention. Essentially, whatever triggers we've been maybe suppressing, denying, it's like, you know, the energy is like, okay, it's going to get in our face to get our attention. It, ultimately, it is for our best and highest good. It is for healing. It is for releasing, for alchemy. But Venus is with Chiron. So this is an energy of this also is going to, could big time trigger some of our wounding, especially, um, wounding we've received, you know, the feminine aspect of ourself has received from the masculine, um, 
you know, this is also any deep wounding we have to our hearts. Venus is our heart essence, our heart energy, you know, that, that is being, it's being um, activated for alchemization. There's a uh, Venus of Chiron is a very healing energy. This is like healing of our heart, but oftentimes we, with Chiron, it, we have to, it's like the broken open human heart. We have to let, we have to, we have to break through the barriers around our hearts where we've wanted to. And this is, you know, sometimes the Scorpio too, it's like, we want to have that stoic stone cold kind of like, I'm okay. You know, we don't want to show our emotions sometimes, but with Venus and Chiron, it's like, we have to break through the barriers, feel, really feel the grief or feel the anger or whatever it is, you know, of course, you know, listen to your own intuition, do what feels safe for you. Don't, you know, overdo anything if it doesn't feel safe for you, but Chiron is like the broken open heart. So there's this really big energy of there's, I see so much potential. If we can just feel whatever emotions are here, the grief, the anger, it could be the sacred rage. It could be the sorrow, whatever it is, you know, there can be deep, deep healing and just letting those waters of our emotions move through us without, right. And this is also about the Scorpio full moon um, is about releasing the story, right. Releasing the old story, feeling whatever's wanting to come up and releasing the old story. That's really big. Um, so there's this beautiful healing of our heart energy with Venus and Scorpio, but um, I mean, I'm sorry, Venus with Chiron and Aries and also you know, Chiron and Aries is healing to the, I am that I am. This is healing to, it's healing to the masculine energy. It's this healing to our self agency. This is healing to where we may be, where we may be identifying, taking on our wounds as our identity. Now our wounds can certainly, they can support us, our sacred, you know, our wounds, sacred wounds. We've turned them into our sacred medicine, but we don't need to uh, label ourselves or take that on as our identity. We are not our wounds. Chiron and Aries is wanting to heal that. Chiron and Aries is, you know, just healing. Where have we not shown up as our authentically individually expressed self? Because Aries is all about, it's, you know, the sign of identity and authentic expression. And it's like just saying yes to life. Where has our, where has our, where has our life force energy been suppressed? There's this big healing of that. So that all this healing of the heart energy, but it can also intensify the deep, deep feels and emotions that are coming up with the Scorpio. There's this huge, oh my gosh, I'm just really feeling it. Like there's so much healing energy with this eclipse if we can feel our emotions and release the old story right let go of the old story and I know it's not easy to do um releasing the energetic emotional attachments entanglements like there's so much healing here with this eclipse although it could be very very triggered and you know there may be explosions or triggers you know Scorpio can be that geyser energy that volcano energy I um, mean it is about reclaiming our life force energy Scorpio the more we integrate what's been suppressed we claim more and more of our life force energy it's also reclaiming of our magic because our life force energy is our magic you know um so there's a big reclaiming of life force energy through letting go of these old uh, cosmic, uh, old cosmic, but also earthly, you know, karmic cores and all those things. Um, I need to plug my computer in here because I've been talking a lot longer than I thought I was. So I'm just going to give this a little pause and I'm going to. Um... Okay, so I got my computer plugged in here. There may be a cosmic message there. Where are we feeling run down and honoring that? I think it could be a good idea to just slow down, breathe, ground as best you can. Give yourself that spaciousness so you're not just totally tossed around in the emotions and unconsciously reacting from that place. Now, there may be big things that pop up and maybe something does happen. We may have a big reaction. The Scorpio energy, sometimes, you know, Scorpio is like when that energy, you know, it can be a very calculated energy. It's, you know, there can be the stinger with Scorpio. Sometimes with the, what I'm just sensing into the Scorpio lunar eclipse is we, maybe us or maybe others, we may see it. Sometimes it may be that energy if we say everything we've always wanted to say to someone where we've practiced in our mind saying it, you know, it can be, um, and sometimes there, there may be intense things, you know, Scorpio, it can be, can be the harsh truth sometimes now you know, and then we get there, then we also get into projection and all of that kind of stuff, you know, projection can be big with the Scorpio energy, but, um, what I'm wanting to say is that maybe there is something that's sad that needs to be sad. And maybe a relationship does split or end or something. And, and, and maybe that's just what was supposed to happen. So I want to share that too, but 
if you can give yourself space, breathe, respond with compassionate curiosity to why you're being triggered as opposed to just automatically reacting to something. So, you know, there's a lot of ways this energy can, can play out. I do feel though with eclipses, things play out just how they need to typically. Um, so yeah, so there's that energy. Now, the other kind of energy I want to switch to is the, I want to go to the Jupiter ingressing Aries. So this can feel, <laughs> this might feel more exciting. Um, so we have all this energy. So May 10th, we have Jupiter ingressing Aries. Now I want to switch this to Oh, also in the Scorpio full moon lunar eclipse, we have Mars with Neptune. So uh, an old way, and, and Mars is the traditional ruler of Scorpio. So this is significant. Uh, maybe I should actually go back there for a second. So let me see here. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, we have Mars with Neptune. Mars is a traditional ruler of Scorpio. So some the old ways we've been taking action there's something that has to be dissolved with it right our old habit pattern and dynamic where we just res, where we act from that unconscious place something is wanting to be dissolved right perhaps it might be like an, uh, the veil is lifted we can see through the illusion of our old self-limiting beliefs or habits or patterns or something like that so i just wanted to like just mention that and then of course the big thing is like jupiter will be at zero degrees of Aries at the time of the uh, lunar eclipse. Now I want to go back to Jupiter and Aries. And I want to switch this to a zero Aries chart. Okay, here we go. There we go. Got this as a zero Aries chart now. So you can see Tomorrow, from the time I'm filming this, May 10th, Jupiter, the planet of expansion, uh, visionary energy, living with higher meaning, purpose. It's like the quest for the higher truth, you know, capital T truth as opposed to little t truth. Um, Jupiter's the uh, planet of good fortune, abundance, prosperity. It's moving into Aries. Now, this is very big because, well, one, Aries is like the uh, equinox point, and it's a birthing energy. So there's zero degrees is a degree of infinite possibility. How I'm seeing this is, you know, Jupiter since December of last year has been moving through Aries or moving through Pisces. So we've been and Jupiter is a traditional ruler of Pisces, uh, Neptune, the modern ruler, but we've been connecting with higher visions, higher dreams. Now that Jupiter is going into Aries, plus all the Jupiter, Neptune kind of conjunction energy we had in March, April, Venus activating all of that. This is time to birth the bigger vision, the big, bigger dream. Now, just to kind of give us some context here. Um, and remember, it doesn't all happen in a day. Sometimes with the Aries energy, we feel like we have to rush and make it all happen today, but it doesn't have to happen. And I, I, I really do think first the Scorpio uh, lunar eclipse is going to be clearing out a lot of old karma so we can create space for this new birthing energy with Jupiter and Aries because Jupiter is still going to be at zero degrees as we're moving out of the eclipse, which I think is really uh, or let me just like make sure I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, or wait, yeah, Jupiter's still at zero degrees though at the time of the eclipse, if I'm remembering correctly. So, you know, I, I see, I kind of feel like this eclipse first needs to come clear out some old things and then Mercury, we need to kind of a change of perspective with Mercury and retrograde too. So, uh, and there's kind of all this paradoxical energy where we might want to rush, 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 and we feel so excited to take action. And uh, we want to, you know, we want it to be kind of grounded, conscious, inspired action, not just like totally impulsive. And that's really the initiation of Aries is that fine line between that gut instinct that's like intuitive versus just like impulsiveness. And the more we're just kind of refined, um, our refined attunement to our body our gut, you know, that's really where, um, that's really how we, I feel like really supports us to kind of meet this Aries energy. Now to give some context, Jupiter ingressed Aries on, or will ingress Aries on May 10th. We'll make it all the way to eight degrees of Aries and then go retrograde on July 28th. Then while Jupiter's in retrograde is going to go back 
into Pisces. So we'll be in Aries and then move back into Pisces at about the end of October. And then um, Jupiter is going to make it back to 28 Pisces and station direct at 28 Pisces on November 23rd. Then Jupiter is going to go back, you know, 28, 29, and then go back into Aries in December. So we're getting a little taste, right? When a planet kind of um, moves like Jupiter, who can spend about a year in a sign. Um, but oftentimes what happens is like last year, Jupiter moved into Pisces, Jupiter was in Aquarius in 2021, but spent some time in Pisces and then went back into Aquarius. Then Jupiter went through Pisces and now is going into Aries and then we'll go back into Pisces. So that will be like the third time Jupiter has gone into Pisces. So when we see this kind of, um, uh, we see this kind of movement like back and forth on the cusps of the signs, you know, there's like some unfinished business. So, but what we are getting is we're getting a taste of birthing this higher dream, the higher uh, expansive Pisces energy we've been dreaming into because Aries is about like forward movement, action, trailblazing, um, carving a new path forward in life. So it says Mars, the sign, the sign of conscious inspired action. It's a, you know, it's the, it's the cardinal spark of life. Pisces is where we dream into the etheric, the celestial, the imaginative realms, uh, the dream realm. And then we birth it into this physical reality in Aries. So, and Jupiter is all about going towards what makes us feel the most expansive, what gives us the most meaning and purpose in life. Like that's what Jupiter wants. Jupiter will expand whatever it's touching. So however we're relating to the Aries energy, that will get amplified. So the Aries energy, you know, the high vibrational expressions are like Aries is energy about saying yes to life, living your full body. Yes. Um, believing in yourself, right. It's the self-confidence, the self agency. It's, um, it's taking conscious inspired action towards what really fills you up with life. It's saying yes to life. And so Jupiter and Aries, you know, I really see this energy of it's, if we say yes to the flow of life, Jupiter and Aries is going to give us the signs and the synchronicities to open up the clear pathway forward. You know, Aries is this decisive energy. Pisces is, can be kind of diffuse where oh, we're like connected to all these timelines and all these possibilities. And Aries is like, you pick one and you move forward. And so, um, and the energy of Aries is like, it's like the full body. Yes. It's like, unless it's a hell yes, it's a hell no, you know, with the Aries energy. So this is about getting connected to our like, hell yes, our full body. Yes. And looking for the sign and being open to the signs and synchronicities to follow those. Of course, all Always listen to your own intuition, your own discernment. Now, look to what house Aries is in your astrology chart, because when Jupiter moves into Aries, it's like, uh, I don't know if it's like in your ninth house, it's like, get your passport ready, baby. There may be like an unexpected travel opportunity or like renew that passport, you know? Um, and so I thought like, maybe it'd be fun to go through all the signs and talk about that energy because we have to play with life. Aries is about action. So we can't just like sit on the couch doing nothing expecting you know everything to like unfold like areas is you have to say yes you have to play you have to engage with life um and just to give you like a jupiter story one time jupiter was not in aries gosh maybe jupiter was in scorpio sagittarius i'd have to go back and look but this is right when i first started studying astrology more like formally and I just, there was something big going on with Jupiter and I knew it. And I was like, I just kind of asked like, okay, like show me a sign. And I got this, um, I got this, like, this like, just came into my mind, Google, like search astrology jobs. And so I like searched it and I was just studying astrology and I found like, there was like a job for this like wellness center kind of retreat center place that was opening up in Austin, Texas, looking for like a full-time astrologer. Now they wanted someone with like five years experience, you know, full-time, like giving readings and things. And I didn't have that experience. I was just kind of starting giving readings at that time, but I was like, I wouldn't have gotten that sign if it didn't mean something. So I just like sat there at like two in the morning and just applied. And somehow I wrote like a really compelling like letter of why I wanted this job. And they invited me to come for an interview, like within a few days, you know, this is Jupiter, things happen fast, Jupiter and Aries, things happen fast, expansion happens fast, acceleration happens fast. Um, so, and, but Jupiter was not Aries, I was just mentioning, but anyway, so I go and I go down to Austin. What they needed me to do was this all happened very quick. Jupiter energy does tend to happen quick. Um, 
I, they wanted me to make a presentation, like for people that were coming to the retreat center to like teach them something about astrology. And so I created this presentation on like the four elements in astrology and, you know, went down and did my presentation. I didn't get the job. And I was like, what, why, why did all this happen? You know, it's like, where did I get this big message? And I didn't get it. This is where things aren't always what they seem. And this is going to be big with Mercury retrograde. Things are not what they seem. So, um, but what happened was I had this presentation. I was like, oh, I made this really cool, like engaging interactive uh, workshop. And I had like the little handouts, you know, that I made for people. And I was teaching yoga, at yoga studios as well. And I just started doing that workshop at yoga studios. And I just, it opened up so much for astrology because people started booking readings that were coming to the workshops. And I was having so much fun teaching about astrology, like in an empowered way. And, you know, I started, it was, I started, um, uh, I started holding like moon circles around that time as well, um, in-person ones. Um, and so just so much started to expand and open up. And I started like talking, you know, I started creating more workshops since I had like all these, you know, I had a, a handful of workshops and all the PowerPoints. And so essentially it was because I said yes to playing with life. I said yes to that Jupiter invitation and Jupiter is also like Jupiter is a teacher of like higher wisdom and higher knowledge and those kinds of things too. So I said, yes, and I didn't know what I was saying yes to, and things didn't work out how I thought they would, but it totally changed the trajectory of my life. And I don't know if I'd be sitting here today, if I had not not said yes to that Jupiter invitation, Jupiter, the energy of Jupiter is our inner Jupiter wants to give us expansive opportunities that will support us to expand, to grow so we can live with meaning and purpose and share our gifts and teach the wisdom that we have. And so Jupiter and Aries is a very exciting energy. So we're getting a little taste about really setting into motion, taking conscious inspired action to what really lights us up with passion and purpose. And if you don't feel like you have that, this would be a good time to check in maybe with your inner Jupiter and ask for the signs and the synchronicities to guide you towards what will give you the meaning and purpose. Um, I think it's a really exciting energy. It's a very healing energy. Um, you know, I mean, it also, also got to look at like perhaps the shadow side. It could, ex uh, it could also expand some of the shadow Aries, which is like the uh, wounded masculine energy as well. So, but also on the flip side, that could also bring a lot of healing to it. And I just see so much, if we're just saying yes to life, like if we're like just a full body, yes, I'm open to live with meaning, passion, and purpose. Like Jupiter is going to give us those signs and synchronicities, put us at the right place, the right time. Uh, you know, that is Jupiter. You're at the right place, the right time you meet someone. So listen to those things and pay attention and also use your discernment. <laughs> the Aries, you know, is the initiation to get really attuned to what is intuition, that instinct versus impulse. I mean, really they're the same thing, but the only difference is in when we're, you know, when we're intuitive, it's like the right timing, right? The gut instinct, the gut impulse or the right timing, the impulsiveness is maybe the wrong timing. So that can be an energy to pay attention to. I think it's really expansive, can give us a lot of hope. Uh, I can, you know, it can really, we've had so much diffuse Pisces energy, nebulous, the Aries, Jupiter and Aries is like, Venus is an Aries, you know, Mars will be joining an Aries, um, I think May 24th. It's really like, okay, let's go time. Let's take conscious inspired action towards, you know, really doing something that gives us meaning purpose. Look what house Aries is in your chart that will, perhaps give you a clue or bring more cosmic context or more affirmation to you. So then we have the, um, we have Mercury going retrograde. Oh yeah. Okay. Let me just pull up the chart here. We have Mercury going retrograde at, let me just, I think if I just do this, we can pull up that chart, Mercury. Gosh, I feel like this has been a long video, but it's kind of fun to just sit here and just chat with you. I hope that I hope that you're enjoying it too. Um, we have Mercury going retrograde. So earlier in the day, May 10th at uh, 6.47 a.m. Central or 4.47 a.m. Pacific. Actually, what I want to do is I just kind of want to give you the rundown here real quick. Um, so Mercury will be go going retrograde. Mercury goes retrograde about three weeks, three times a year essentially Mercury has a four month cycle. So Mercury will station direct May 10th at four Gemini and we'll go backwards to 
uh, let's see, 26 Taurus on June 3rd. So the retrograde is May 10th through June 3rd. We've already kind of been feeling the pre-retrograde energy for over a week now as Mercury made the first pass through those degrees. Um, now what I want to say is when we're talking about a Mercury retrograde, um, especially Mercury Venus retrograde, this is when they're passing between the earth and sun, right? Venus and Mercury travel faster than the earth. Mercury travels the fastest because it's the closest to the sun. So what's happening is Mercury is uh, making a lap between us and the sun. And the retrograde is like the, um, it's the optical illusion of Mercury making a lap going faster than us passing us. So it's like when you pass a car on the road, and you're passing the car and you look through your rear view mirror and it's like, oh, they look like they're going backwards. You know, they're not, but they look like that. That's the retrograde, but it's still energetically significant because, um, because we feel it energetically, essentially it's our energetic experience. And that is significant. But when Mercury's going retrograde, Mercury's ending one cycle and beginning a new cycle. So there's this like really magical window in the middle of every Mercury retrograde. And it's called a Kazemi. It's like a cool word. Oops. Okay. There we go. It's like a cool word. And it means, so Kazemi is whenever a planet is within one degree of a sun. Um, in some traditions, it's like more specific, I think within 17 arc minutes, but just think about a degree. So Mercury, this is when Mercury aligns in the heart of the sun. So it's like sun, Mercury, us, this is mid retrograde happens every retrograde, mid retrograde. So this time around it's happening at 21 um, no, it's happening at, on May 21st at zero Gemini. Now I was very curious because zero Gemini, that is huge. Uh, Mercury, it rules Gemini and zero is a degree of infinite possibility. So that is huge. And it's, it's essentially it's starting a new four month cycle. So, you know, when Mercury um, aligns with the sun halfway between every retrograde, it's like we get a new idea. Mercury is the planet of mind, thought, communication. So we get a new idea, a new inspiration. Um, and it comes to us. It's like Mercury, the messenger, picks it up from the sun and sends that new idea, that new inspiration to us, that new thought. You know, there's a new idea to work with, a new thought to work with. And so it's very powerful. Zero is the degree of infinite possibility. And Gemini is the sign of the beginner's mind, the magic of the beginner's mind, the childlike awe, wonder, curiosity. Gemini is there's infinite possibilities in every moment. And, and Gemini is the art of being attuned to the unseen possibility. You know, it's like the in, in the multidimensional Gemini realms and tapping into it. And then it's like where our thought goes, our energy flows, right? That's the uh, law of mentalism. All is mind, you know, in the hermetic arts where our thoughts go, energy flows. So we connect to the unseen possibility, the unseen potential, our mind, we connect in with it. And then we send energy out that way. And we're always doing it, whether we're conscious of it or not. So, and you know, and Mercury and Gemini is so great at like gathering information, the facts and knowledge and weaving it all together and integrating it. It does tend to be, you know, Gemini does tend to be a bit more of a linear uh, analytical sign. So Mercury retrograde, uh, we have a shift in cognition are more non-linear, multidimensional, a symbolic, uh, yin, feminine kind of way of perceiving reality comes more online. So it's very creative, um, very, very powerful. And so this is really Mercury retrograde asks us to change our perspective, change our mind to revisit. We do, we do tend to have to revisit things. Maybe we left undone the last four months, you know, um, sometimes we revisit with people as well. Um, there tends to be, you know, so we're, we're rethinking, we're reconceptualizing. And then also this retrograde, you know, we're going from air to earth. So we're changing our mind. We're re-perceiving something. We're asked to really perceive from our bodies. So dropping, you know, maybe integrating, you know, mind and body, mind and heart. Plus like all this Aries energy, mind, heart, you know, head, brain, heart, brain, gut, brain, bringing it all together. But with, uh, also with um, Mercury being in this air elemental year, there's a new idea coming and we're grounding it. There's so much grounding energy and it's coming down into our bodies, listening to our body wisdom, letting our body wisdom be our like number one guide. And, you know, there's so much um, powerful energy this year to, to do somatic healing. So, cause also our trauma can 
communicate to us in our bodies as well. So healing the trauma in our bodies and getting more and more in touch with our authentic body wisdom, the wisdom of our heart. Usually, you know, what I do is I put my hands on my heart and then I make sure my hands are on my heart and I'm connecting with my heart guidance and I'm asking for guidance from my body. Um, but it's very, very powerful. So I think I want to share more about this. This video has been like so long, um, but so it's a very powerful Mercury retrograde. So also, you know, we tend to have more miscommunications. What we think somebody said may not be what they meant to say. What we think we said may not be what someone else perceives. It could even uh, trigger the Scorpio full moon triggers even more. So just to be aware of that, to breathe, give things space, come into your body, North nose and Taurus. So find pleasure, go outside, connect with the earth, the flowers, pleasure. That can be a really great, um, you know, that can balance out the energy really well. And then, you know, of course the North node will come to, um, oh, I was just going to say for a moment, Mercury retrograde will going, be going through the Pleiades. So we'll be having a lot of light codes from the Pleiades streaming through that our minds can pick up on a lot of Pleiadian uh, healing we can pick up on. If you're a Pleiadian star seed, have that connection, you know, you may be picking up on a lot, having a lot of also uh, upgrades to your uh, energy field, your body, those kinds of things. Um, lots of intuitive insights may be coming in from the Pleiades. Be very healing. I actually see a lot of healing with that as well. So then also we have, uh, I think it's, when was it? Oh, goodness gracious. We have the North Node comes to, yeah, I just want to like, just bring it up for just a moment. Um, okay, let me pull up the chart here. Let me pull up the chart here. Okay. Yeah, I just want to bring the, oops. I'm having, there may be tech glitchy things too when Mercury retrograde. I can't see the chart anymore. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, and you know, often the disruptions to our daily life with Mercury retrograde is wanting us to shift our perspective where you're like, oh my gosh, this is so important. I have to do it now. Mercury retrograde is like, just take a nap, take a break. The more you can slow down this week, I think, and through Mercury retrograde can be great. You know, if you're, if you're feeling that Jupiter Aries inspiration, it feels right. Like, of course, go for it. But I think we have some reorienting with the Scorpio lunar eclipse and the Mercury retrograde, maybe before we go full force Aries, kind of Aries, Jupiter and Aries action. That's just my sense at least. Um, yeah, I just want to find the North node conjuncting the sun. Yeah, that's on May 13th. Okay, here we go. So May 13th. So that is this Friday on Venus's day. We have the North node coming to conjunct the sun here. And so this is, you know, this could, this is like charging up the path forward. You know, this is a great day just to, to notice, see the signs, be open and available to receive the signs. Um, something is being really, I see something's being set into motion here for our path forward. Um, and, you know, in this, we're in this eclipse season, this eclipse season got initiated with Uranus. So Uranus can be the disruptor, but whatever is being disrupted in our lives, I do sense is there's, th there's a gift on the other side of it. You know, if we can be open and available, Uranus is disrupting where we're not in our sovereignty, um, where we're giving away our sovereignty. And so wanting us to awaken to it, and often it might take a disruption, you know, to do that. So I just want to kind of bring light to that. So, so much, I have so much more I could share, but I think I want to leave it at that. Just wishing you all blessings on this energy. Um, slow down, release what needs to be released, listen to your body, wisdom, ground, uh, give yourself some time for all the beautiful Taurus pleasure of being with the earth and the flowers and receiving and remember to breathe. And I think that's about it. If you're having big things come up, you know, I always love to sit in one-on-one -on -one sessions are a very like ceremonial, sacred ceremonial experience for me. So feel free to book an astrology reading. I'd love to meet with you, explore how all this energy is activating your chart on a personal level. There's a link right under here in the description. Um, and I have my next, you know, it's a 10 week foundations of astrology chart reading course. That's going to start in June. And if you want to kind of know, okay, what does all this mean? The trines, the squares, the sextiles, uh, 
what is looking at your chart? What do all these symbols mean? How do I make meaning of it? Like we're going to go so deep into how to interpret your own astrology chart. We actually go beyond the basics, beyond the foundations. Um, and then you can start applying it to friends and family. And it's, if you're interested in becoming a professional astrologer, this is a great first step really passionate about teaching. We have so much fun in the courses. They're live, they're interactive, you get recordings to it. And um, I'll actually give you, if you want to join the course, uh, just type in Eclipse, all uppercase at the link below with the course, and um, you'll get 20% off the course as well. Just feeling inspired in the moment to do that. So I'm just going to go with it. And um, I love you so much. And I'll definitely connect in more with you soon. Bye for now.